To be a successful negotiator, a woman has to delicately combine the assertive, numbers-driven approach with the empathetic, supportive approach, and you have to do each at the right time. I will teach you how to do this. It is called the seven second rule. You've likely heard the phrase, you only get one chance to make a first impression. When entering a negotiation, you must create a presence to be reckoned with, one that is respected, but also puts others at ease. I call this owning the room from the moment you walk in, and you get seven seconds to do it. Here's what I do. Get in touch with your best possible attitude of strength and confidence, or your alter ego. Exude it through your smile and genuine interest in your associates. Invite a great handshake. Continue to build rapport, maintain positive eye contact, lean forward in your chair, smile when appropriate, mirror the other person's body postures in a subtle way, in other words, their energy. Display your confidence that things will end to your liking and their liking. Once you've made your seven second impression, Diffuse any negativity with alignment. Sit or stand shoulder to shoulder or turn to face the same direction if you can. If not, turn away slightly and pause to think about your response. Make a positive final impression by standing tall and shaking hands warmly when saying goodbye. Many women fear saying things that may hurt them. It's a realistic fear, saying the wrong thing or saying the right thing the wrong way. Women speak differently than men because of the cultural pressures on us to be nice as children. Forcing yourself to speak in new ways has been known to raise very deep and real insecurities and anxieties, often seated in us by parental disapproval. Coping with these anxieties is not an option during an important negotiation. It will minimize your ability to respond strategically and creatively. This work needs to be done away from the negotiating arena and under low stress circumstances until it becomes habitual. Some areas to work on are, number one, minimizing your work or position. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, I just manage a legal office, or I'm only a manager, not a director yet, or I'm kind of in charge of that information technology group? That business unit needs you and thinks you're critical or they wouldn't be paying you. Step back and identify all the reasons why your business unit needs you. Express pride at the ways in which you help your business reach its financial objectives. Instead, you can say, I support the income streams of 20 lawyers. Or, I keep the vice president on schedule and traveling with the least amount of downtime. Or, I keep my company's computers running and replace them within a budget when needed. The latter are people who get the job offers. Another area to look at is using minimizing words. These are words that diminish the importance or size of an achievement, or which diminish or juvenilize you. These words are just, only, I guess, it was really nothing, it was luck. For once, I wasn't dumb. Here are some effective and strong substitutes to use when under the pressure of responding to a compliment. Thank you, I'm pleased how it turned out. Thank you, I'm quite proud of what I've achieved. Thank you, I appreciate your kind words. Thank you, I do feel good about it. I must give some credit to those who helped me along the way. A third area is using qualifiers. You say something with strength that become overwhelmed by a desire to backtrack because your boss frowns. Women soften their direct thoughts, opinions, and committed ideas with qualifiers to reduce situational anxiety. But these weaken your message and your position. Qualifiers sound like this. You say, it's kind of like, your boss thinks, what is it like? You say, we sort of did, your boss thinks, what did you do? You say, perhaps we should, your boss thinks, should we or shouldn't we? If you really need to soften a strong statement, do so without invalidating it. For example, you could say, I feel strongly that we should act now rather than wait for all the reasons mentioned. I'm curious to hear what others think. Sometimes you may be called upon to verbalize a position about which you are not yet clear. Preface your remarks with facts about why you're not clear, then explain what would make you more committed. For example, you could say, Given the facts we have so far, I'm not sure we should move so quickly. 
I would need more data from human resources about this before making my final decision. Strong negotiators don't beat around the bush. They ask for what they need to move forward. The great news is all these areas are within your power to alter. You are now ready to learn the steps to negotiating with difficult people.